that I'm not Father Dave, Father James, and it's really good to be back here. It feels like Christmas. Uh, so nice to see so many of you. Uh, Father Dave and uh, Kathy are um, off uh, on retreat, and I think a little bit of vacation as well. Um, so you'll, you'll have me for two weeks. Uh, I hope you can put up with that. Uh, are there other announcements? Anything within the parish that, that uh, anyone wants to, uh, to to say this morning? Okay, then. Then uh, we will begin this morning's Mass. Uh, again, uh, welcome to everyone, and I am so glad to be here. All right, please stand and join in our first hymn. Lift <coughs> up your heads.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all our hearts are open, all desire is known, and from you no secrets are made. Bless the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the laws. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He was put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death 
and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning of Psalm 91, we will respond on the half verse. Whoever dwells under the defense of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold. For he shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He shall defend you under his wings, and you shall be safe under his feathers. His faithfulness and truth shall be your shield of You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of the terror of the violence by day, of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the sickness that destroys in the day. A thousand shall fall beside you, and ten thousand at your right hand. But you shall not come near you. Indeed, with your eyes you shall behold. <laughs> because you have said, The Lord is my refuge, there shall no evil happen to you. For he shall give his angels charge over you. They shall bear you in their hands. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. Because he has set up his love upon me, therefore I will deliver them. He shall call upon me, and I will hear him. With long life I will satisfy him. The second lesson is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Hebrews, 4, 12 through 16. For the word of God is living and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and is the server of the thoughts and interests of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom must give account. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who could not sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted, as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in no time of need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. came to him saying, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us that we may sit, one on your right hand and the other on your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said to him, We are able. So Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink the cup that I drink, and with the baptism 
I am baptized with, you will be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those whom it is prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be greatly displeased with James and John. But Jesus called them to himself and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever of you desires to be first shall be a slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. sometimes be like little children, turning to our parents when there's something we desire, and we try strategically to go about it. We try to freeze the request in just the right way to increase our chances of getting exactly what we want. And that's how this gospel begins this morning. Mark 10, 35, it reads, Then James and John, the son of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they say, we want you to do whatever we ask. You see, they want something, but they're afraid to divulge exactly what it is. They're looking for a guarantee of acceptance before making the specific ask. They're beating around the bush, just as children might. Jesus, knowing full well, what they want, plays along. Verse 30, 36 reads, What do you want me to do? He asked. The disciples come out with it. They replied, Let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. This verse makes it plain that the disciples yet again have no real grasp of the situation. When James and John make their requests, it's kind of like a historical, mythical, and at the same time, worldly point of view. In today's terms, you might say it's kind of a cinematic, unrealistic view that is conjured up in their heads. Jesus at the center, his closest friends and confidants to his left and to his right, reclining in, in glory for all eternity, building clouds and blue skies and rays of sunshine abound. This is James and John's version of the perfect forever. Glorious, but it is far from the reality that Jesus, Jesus is trying to make them understand. Once again, the disciples miss the If we hop back just a little bit this, in this morning's reading, Mark 10, 33-34, I'll read to you. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem. The Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and scribes. They will condemn him to death and deliver him. 
to the Gentiles. They will mock him, spit on him, scourge him, and kill him. And on the third day, he will rise again. Jesus is forecasting his impending death, and yes, his resurrection as well. But a heartbeat later, James and John are positioning for a place of prestige and prominence. Jesus is not the Messiah that they expected. So much so that they just can't seem to get the picture of the reality. No matter what Jesus says to them, their eyes and their hearts are focused on past expectations, not on the reality of the Savior in their midst. Verse 38 reads, You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink? Or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. James and John readily agreed without understanding. Again, with lofty visions of greatness and authority. Not the suffering and persecution that Jesus is alluding to. You shall indeed drink from the cup that I drink, and you shall be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. Verse 39. Jesus' statement is like a chilly wind blowing through the exchange. Jesus knows full well the persecution, the suffering, the martyrdom that awaits some, and the very difficult and challenging life that awaits all his disciples. But they have yet to grasp it. They have no idea the gravity of what they so effortlessly agree to. And I continue here with verse 40 to 41. But to sit at my right or my left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Again, the disciples missed the point fighting amongst themselves, caring too much about status and about being the favored one. Status rather than a message of salvation that was truly playing out. Verses 42 through 45, Jesus gathers his disciples, silencing the arguing group and attempts to refocus them. He clears away their misconceptions of what his ministry is thought to be about and explains what it is truly about. He minces no words. He tells them what he tells them is radical. It is not at all their perceived notion of what the Messiah is, what they expected from the long-awaited Savior. Please listen as I read 42. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Indeed, whoever wants to be great among you must be servants, and whoever wants to be the first must be slave to all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be saved, but to serve, and to give his life for the ransom of men. Holy cow, right? Absolutely radical. Can you imagine the looks on the faces of the disciples when, they, when the realization sets in? Their faces must have dropped thinking, is this really what I signed up for? Servitude? I remember when I was, I remember when the idea of Christian servitude really hit home to me. It was during Holy Week. It was a Monday, Thursday service. It was at a time in my life when I was just old enough 
to take ownership of my faith. I was no longer going to church because my parents made me, or because someone wanted me to, or I felt obliged to go. I was going to church because I wanted to. I was searching for something. I was feeling around in the dark, trying to determine what it was I truly believed. The gospel that night, in part, was this, John 13, 3 through Please listen while I read. Jesus knew the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from his meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you'll understand. No, said Peter. You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash your feet, you have no part of me. And then, of course, during Monday Thursday's Monday, Thursday service, the priest reenacts the washing of the feet. Suddenly, it all became so real to me. I remember the hair standing up on my arm. Really, I'm not kidding. All the pieces of all the church services I had ever been to began to fall into place like a jigsaw puzzle. Jesus was the ultimate servant, serving us by laying down his life for our sins, <coughs> yours and mine and everyone who has ever been born throughout all time. For our salvation, he humbled himself. He suffered on our behalf and was willing to die for you and for me. Jesus, the Son of God, became man. And before he was about to suffer and die on the cross, he got down on his hands and knees and washed the feet of his disciples. Why? Why this night? Why now? Jesus, on the last night he would have with his disciples, had a message to get across, and time was short. He did not want his disciples to miss it, to misunderstand it. So he provided an illustration that they couldn't possibly misunderstand or ever forget. He has washed their feet as an example for them to follow. If the Son of Man, their Lord, their teacher, could stoop down and wash their dirty, dusty feet, certainly they could serve others. Jesus taught them, and in turn the entire church, that to serve him, to carry out his ministry, they too must humbly, lovingly, and sacrificially serve others. It also dissolved any idea of rank or status among his disciples. All were to be servants. <coughs> Which honestly answers the original question from Mark, from Mark 10.35 at the beginning of my comments this morning. There's a commonality in all the sermons that I give. You probably know that by now. I attempt to discern what God is teaching us, the knowledge he wants us to glean from Sunday's Holy Scriptures, and then what the good Lord wants us to do with that knowledge as we leave Mass this morning and go our separate ways. This morning, I'm leaving you with this thought. I always forget to look back. You guys do. When we are at our best, 
We are serving others in need. We are serving others in the name of Jesus Christ. And by our willingness to serve others in need, to love others without limits, to inspire other Christians to do the same, and even better than that, we encourage non-Christians to ask, what the heck is in it for you? And there's our invitation to tell them all about Jesus Christ. You are the living, breathing embodiment of the gospel message, and that is contagious. The gospel message is not one of empowerment, prestige, or prosperity. It's not about who sits at Jesus' right or his left. It's about being the reflection of Jesus' love and the transforming power of that love by serving others in his name. We live in a world where there is so much, so many hurting people, broken people, unreached people. Reach out to them. Whoever the good Lord puts in front of you, reach out to them. Sometimes all it takes is a listening ear and an open heart to lead someone to faith and the ultimate healing, which we all know is Jesus. This week, this year, for all the rest of your days that Jesus blesses you with, I urge you to serve with abandon, to serve with your heart overflowing with the Holy Spirit, to serve as Jesus himself taught you and commanded you to do. I know, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, or anything I might have told you before, or anything you might already be doing, but I'll say it anyways. When you do this, there's absolutely no better feeling in the entire world than to serve Jesus. It's better than gold, it's better than power better than prestige. It's even better than the New York Yankees going to the World Series. <laughs> it's sheer joy. There is no better calling in the world than responding to Jesus' call to love and serve in his name. Go on out there and do it. And I will too. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Please stand and let us say the words of the nice week. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the eternal God of the Father, God of God.
We believe in one of the holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being and humanity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Give grace, Holy Father, to all the bishops, the priests, and the deacons. For Steve, our Archbishop, Julian, William, David, our bishops. Archdeacon Henry, Father David, Father James, and Deacon Sue, and from all the people of our congregation in Dallas. And today, in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Bishop of Seabury Anglican Church of Gales Ferry, Connecticut. The Venerable J. A. Unger, Deacon Mark Haywood, and Deacon Brett Cremet, Healing and Counseling Ministries of the ABLW. Lord, in your mercy. For all of those who proclaim the gospel, at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, our prayer. For our nation and for those in authority, and for all of those in public service, especially in church of our president, Catherine of Governor, and all of our national and world leaders. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, our prayer. Lord, we lift up Israel and God to you. Please speak into this crisis. Give world leaders wisdom as they handle this situation. Guard our hearts and minds as we pray. Open our lives to those who grieve in our churches and communities and help us to comfort them. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. For the persecuted church, around the world. Lord, please protect and sustain great Christians who worship you under the threat of persecution in many forms. Bless and protect them. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We ask for your goodness, O Lord, to come and stand in all those who in this transitory world are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those that are on our prayer list and those that you wish to name at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Here are prayer. For the unborn and their parents, and to preserve all women in childhood. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in your faith and fear, especially remembering those who have perished in the natural, or the natural disasters in the South. That you will for them and you will for them. We ask you to give us grace to follow the good examples of all of our saints that we share with them in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, please protect the brave men and women, employed women in our community who serve as police, firefighters, and paramedics. Please guide these men and women. <coughs> And help them mentally, physically, spiritually to confront the people and the situation set before them. 
Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Please turn to your book and join me in the Father, you are good and gracious God. We thank you for providing us with this place of worship. We thank you for the town of and all the officials that make this possible. Lord, we know this is not our permanent home, and that you've already chosen a place for us. We pray for patience to wait in your time, wisdom to discern the place to travel for us, and the courage to believe in the place that we call the Church of the Resurrection. My Father, grant me the soul of Jesus Christ, our only mediator in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess the sins against you, our Father, and we, by the will we have done, by what we have done, we have not loved you with our own hearts, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, we are truly sorry that we have not made our hand, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, and that we may be like you are with, and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent, and with true faith, Turn to him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins and confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us hear that peace now. Christ loved us, gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Please turn us in our offertory in Psalm 134.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty, our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of his name. suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there, by his one oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And he instituted, and in his holy gospel, commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death sacrifice until his coming again. So now, O oh merciful Father, in your great goodness, we ask you to bless and sanctify with your word and Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to your Son and Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most precious, um, most um, blessed body and blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of your dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we humbly we, your humble servants, celebrate and make here before you your divine majesty with these holy gifts, the memorial of your sons commanded us to make, remembering his blessed passion, his precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and his promise to come again. We earnestly desire your fatherly goodness mercifully to accept us, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, asking you to grant that by the merits and death of your son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, that we and your whole church may obtain forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits 
of his passion. And here we offer and present to you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, our bodies, to be reasonable and holy and living sacrifices. We humbly pray that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction and be one body with him that he may dwell in us as we in him. And although we are unworthy because of our many manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we ask you to accept this duty and service we owe, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, but in your own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather our arms in your kingdom, which are the same glory and his character as all of us have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, that we may be blessed to hear your Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood. takes away the sins of the world. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, and with thanks. Body, Lord Jesus Christ. 
The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ. The body of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep it in the last name. The body of our dear Lord Jesus Christ, we give the last of life. The body of our dear Lord Jesus Christ, we give the last of life.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries, for the spiritual food of the most precious life and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us through the sacrament of your behavior and your support of us, that we are true members of this body of your Son, and bless the company of all the and are also heirs to the world of your everlasting. We know we ask the Heavenly Father to assist us with your grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all of the good works that you have prepared for us alone. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we will be with you in the Holy Spirit, in honor and glory, and our own prayer. Amen. For the blessing, once again, I must thank your. Be considered. Uh, being a supply priest has its uh, difficulties. You're often going into places that you've never been, that you're not quite sure what's going on, and also you're a priest who doesn't do service every Sunday. So um, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult than others. But thank you, Be Consider. For your glasses. <laughs> Mine were broken. And thank you, Deacon Sue. When I had a little dry throat, the water was there. As I walked in, this was a little rumpled. She was there at every turn. And for your finger, leaving me alone. You have such a treasure here. Um, and thank you so much for your, your good service. I am looking so forward to coming back next week. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, no blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God the Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you. Amen. Closing hymn this morning is, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>